Hi everyone, it's Kim from Carolina Sewing Back. So today I thought that I would share something with you that would help you get ready for the 4th of July. And you know I have that little spot that I like to do the skinny little um, wall hanging at, which also is perfect for table runners and things like that. And so I've got this great little pinwheel block that I wanted to share with you. It's not like your traditional pinwheel, they're dimensional. And I saw this cute block and I knew that I wanted to do it in red, white, and blue. And then the more I got to looking at it, I was like, you could do a lot of great things with that block. And so even before, before I share the red, white, and blue pinwheels for the 4th of July with you, I wanna show you that I took that same block and made a little pin cushion with it. So along with, um, I put my pins in there so you can see, I even have a little bit of um, a tie to put my scissors there and attach and because these pinwheels are dimensional it makes a great place to store your clips and this is just a wonderful quick easy easy um, whip it up gifts you're going to want to make some of these and give them to all your sewing friends because this is truly something that they'll use and my block i did was nice and big so that even when you pinch it you don't get stuck with your pen so i'll lay that one to the side but this is the block that i'm going to be sharing with you today and in order to show you how we'll get started for that i'm going to be using a few different notions as well and i'm going to go over those with you on my pinwheels i wanted to do four pinwheel blocks in order to give me the wall hanging that I'd like. And four pinwheels, five, six, even three, makes for a great little table topper or table runner. These are wonderful if you just wanna do one simple block to use as hot pads. And again, the block is great, and we're gonna do it with the 4th of July theme, but you can use this for any, any holiday. holiday. It just is a, a simple little block to sew and it's fun. So for ours to get four different blocks, we're gonna cut our actual pieces. We'll have our background and we'll have our actual pinwheel itself. So for each block, we'll need four backgrounds and four pinwheels. And you can cut those. Mine today are cut at six by six. So I have six by six cuts on all of those. And let me show you they're listed. I've got them right here. So I went ahead and did all my cuts and I laid all of mine out. And I've got one last set right here for my block that I wanna show to you how we do the pressing. So when you're cutting your block, you can see simply that is one six by six. And you're gonna do that for your pinwheel and for your background block. So I have my four blue background blocks already cut. I can lay those to the side and let's see if my iron is warm here. It is not, so let's get that cranked up a little. Set that there. The way that you prepare your pinwheels is you'll take the four pinwheel six by sixes that you selected to be your pinwheel um, fabrics and you're gonna fold those in half. So they're this way, and then we're gonna fold, fold them in half, corner to corner, okay? So corner to corner, and then give each one a press. All four of them, okay? Just like this. And I like to stack mine just like this because it's very important. If you do not get the press right on this, then you won't have a pinwheel that's going the way that you want it to. It will have one particular one that might be facing the wrong way. And so I layered them like this because once you folded them in half, then your next fold takes place like this. You bring in one of your folded edges to the corner here, and you're gonna press that. And my iron is good and hot now. And I like to, like I said, leave them stacked on top of each other. And the reason for that is I make sure that I always, always grab the right corner and turn and press. It's really simple to make a mistake and pull this corner down because it looks the same, it acts the same, but it will not work. So you have to have them all from the same direction. So there's my third one, here's my last one. And because of the way that I pressed it, I know that they are laying in the right order and way. Now, one thing that you'll notice on this is 
Let me go ahead and get my iron out of the way here. One thing that you'll notice when you do this project is normally when we have a pinwheel block, we just have two layers of fabric that we're piecing together because we're piecing, you know, regular blocks together. Okay, girls? But with this particular one, we've now taken and we folded it corner to corner and then over again. So right here we have four layers of fabric, okay? Four layers of fabric that we're fixing to place to one more layer, giving us five layers. And then when we put our four squares together, we're gonna have 10 layers of fabric. And so as I began stitching this block together, I noticed that there was more bulk. So any home use machine should be just fine going through this, but I will tell you it's a little different than piecing. So you'll probably wanna use about a 14 needle because like I said, we're going through more layers of fabric as we construct this block together. I have, I'll just give you a little picture of the back here. See where these seams come together? You've got 10 layers of fabric right there. And so if we have 10 layers of fabric, it's nice and thick. And so what we wanna do is on this one is if you have the option to put a straight stitch plate on your machine, that's what I have done today. So you want that straight stitch hole. It will provide um, a single open hole for your needle to penetrate through and it will support your fabric all the way around that hole so that it can't get pulled down into your bobbin case. And so we've put our straight stitch plate on today. And like I said, if you don't have that for your machine, it's totally fine. You can just use your regular, put your 14 needle in there and just be careful. And I am gonna use a, a sewing awl today. I'm using my Taylor's awl and it's got a curve, but you can use whatever you like to use, your purple thing. Some people use a chopstick, whatever you'd like to use. And I did go ahead and put the, the um, diagonal seam tape down on my machine. And what that does is it allows me to know exactly where my fabric edge is feeding in to make sure that I keep it straight as it's feeding into the machine. And so we're gonna go ahead and layer these up and you can pin these in place if you'd like or you can just hold them in place. But the goal is gonna be to, let's lay a block out here so you can see. You're gonna have your four background pieces just like this. Make sure you got your right sides up. And this is the center of my pinwheel block. And you'll notice that at this point, you can go ahead and start laying your fabrics in and going around. And I'm allowing the raw edge of my fabric to feed on the right-hand side of my background fabric here. And the lower edge, again, allowing the cut edges to line up at the bottom right here. And so go ahead and spin your pinwheels around on your background pieces. And now with the last one falling in, you can see that pinwheel go ahead and start to take shape. And so there's our pinwheel before it's stitched. We're gonna go ahead and take it to the machine now. And I like to leave mine laid out just like this so that I can stitch them. Now you stitch them however it's comfortable for you. But like I said, you're going to either pin them or hold them in place. I'll be pinning mine so that I make sure that they don't shift because remember you've got some bulk in there. So as we do this, keeping it lined up and again, you only wanna do a quarter inch seam. So I'm gonna go through all of these. I'm gonna allow you the opportunity to see me sew them in order that you'll see how easy this process is. So let's get started.
so now that you have all of your pinwheels sewn in, you'll notice that if you chain piece like I did, you're gonna end up with half blocks that we're then gonna go ahead and remove our straight pins from, open those up. You can press at this time or you can wait and press later. Um, but this time we're gonna lay these right sides together and then we're gonna piece these straight across here and our block is gonna come together and we have our full pinwheel. So let me open this up for you just so you can see. It's so cute, it's so dimensional. See those little pinwheels there? So I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to finger press only since I'm doing the video today. But I tell you, if you're at home, I would probably press this with the iron because you've got time. I'm gonna finger press opposing seams, press to one side each, and then get these pieced together for you. Here we go. Now I've got all my pretty perfect pinwheels all stitched up. So here's my four blocks. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stitch these one to another and we'll get back and chat about it. Now at this point, if you're actually in the process of sewing, boy, have you realized what I was talking about about the bulk in these because it gets really bulky in here where all those come together. So remember, if you do have the ability to put on a straight stitch plate, you're gonna appreciate that plate because it really supports the fabric and drives it through. So at this point, I'm just gonna alternate my red, white, and blues and go ahead and stitch these together, guys. And there it is. Pretty patriotic pinwheels all stitched together. I have one, two, three, four blocks all stitched up and so that's gonna make for a great bed runner, table runner or wall hanging for me for the 4th of July. Again, remember all you need are four six by six background fabrics, four six by six inch pinwheel fabrics and that neat little fold that I told you gets them stitched up so fast and easy and because of the dimension, it's just playful and fun. So remember, if you wanted to go ahead and make a block or two extra so that you can make pin cushions for all your girlfriends, it's a great idea. So what am I gonna do to finish this up? I'm gonna finish it up the plain old way. I'm gonna layer it up with my backing, my batting, and then my top. And I may even do something fun on the edge of this or may just do a regular old binding. But I'm so glad that you tuned in today and I hope you will stitch this up and you'll have um, it displayed in your home this 4th of July. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for always supporting our business. It's Kim from Carolina Sewing Back.